What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we've got a bunch of interesting news to talk about for the One Piece TCG that I am absolutely here for. And actually, just as we start off, because I find this very, very interesting, we've got the key art for the 2024 Championship Series. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. We've looked at all the promos and all of that. We don't need to rehash old news. What we've got here are a couple of things. Firstly, we've got the key art, which is bootyful. Firstly, Gear 5 Luffy. Shouldn't really surprise anyone. But secondly, you'll notice there is a real big focus on the Egghead arc here. So it does seem like that is going to be something going throughout the year. I'm not sure it's going to just be limited to OP07. Could be wrong. This could just be fun little key art. And hey, you know what? Since we're releasing the key art at around about the time of OP07, we might as well theme it after the Egghead arc. Maybe. But I think this could be hinting at something a little more. There are also a bunch of tournaments that have been revealed, announced, added, call it what you will, on the website. But I'm not going to sit here and just read you off a list of tournaments. I'll put a link in the description to the articles in question. And if you go there, then you can find out exactly what's going on, what tournaments there are, which ones are near you. I will be getting to some at some point. I mean, look, I, I casted a few One Piece tournaments last year. I will be frankly sad if I don't get to cast a bunch this year as well. Nothing to announce yet, I'm afraid, but I, I want to be casting some this year. And I very, very much hope that I do. So yay! Now something else which is happening which is extremely important. We've got the FAQ for Starter Deck 12. And the Starter Deck FAQs are always a little bit annoying to me. Because what I really want to do is make a big video about the Starter Deck 12 FAQ where I'm like, boom, look at everything that's happening in Starter Deck 12. Look at all of these rulings. But there's the problem. There aren't that many rulings because it's a starter deck. So we're going to go through the starter deck 12 FAQ. We're going to be going through the rulings. It's going to be lovely. But I'm just warning you at the outset, there aren't that many rulings out there because of the whole, you know, it's a starter deck. There just aren't that many cards in there. Sound like a plan? Excellent. Also, as a side note, the Starter Deck 12 scans have been added to the official website, which makes me very happy indeed. So, starting off then, we have got ourselves the leader, and we got a lovely little skill here, whereby Don X1, when attacking once per turn, you may return one of your characters with a cost of two or more to the owner's hand, and then set one of your characters with 7,000 power or less to active. Sounds like a plan. Well, can I use this to activate a character that's got a base power of 7,000, but it's been boosted above it? Let's say a skill or a dawn or something else. No. And we know this because it doesn't say base power. It just says power. And that's really, really, really important. And we have seen cards in the past that actually do specifically refer to base power. Or original power. So the Mr. 2 Bonclay Ben from, from OP04. Don minus 1 on opponent's attack. The original power of this character becomes the same as the opponent's leader or character attacking during this battle. So because the game sometimes does refer to original power. We can say with absolute certainty that where it doesn't refer to original power. We are in fact talking about the current stated power on the card. Sound like a plan? Excellent. The next ruler we need to be talking about is from card number three, Dracul Mihawk, one of the designated super rares in the deck. Honestly, one of the most interesting cards in the deck as well. And uh, what we've got here is on play, if you have two or fewer characters, play up to one Muggy Kingdom or Slash Attribute character with a cost of four or less other than Dracul Mihawk from your hand rested. Yeah, playing three characters is good. Well, if I play this character, and it's my third character in play, can I use this to play another character card? No. Because what happens is, you play the card, alright? And when you play the card, it says, if you have two or fewer characters. 
So then you look, you play the card and then you look, it's two including Dracul Mihawk. If you've got three including Dracul Mihawk, it doesn't work. Gutted. Now there is a new Sanji coming along in the deck as well. As well as a leader, we've also got a Sanji character. And what we got here is Dawn X1 when attacking, if you've got five or fewer cards in hand, this character gains 2,000 power until the start of your next turn. Okay, cool. Well, what happens if I use this and I've got five or fewer cards in hand, I get the 2k bump, and then later on in the turn, I draw a couple of cards to go above five cards, six or more, do I keep the 2k bump? And the answer is yes. And we've seen this kind of stuff before. Basically, when you use this skill, when you attack, you look at the number of cards in your hand. If it's five or less, then it activates the extra 2k. And that's it. At that point, you have the extra 2k. It's not an extra 2k while you have five or fewer cards in hand. It is a standard... When you use this attack, if you've got five or fewer cards in hand, then it activates the 2k, and then you're done. And you don't need to worry about it anymore. It's already happened. You've already got the bump. Go home. Have fun. Enjoy yourself. Wonderful. Sounds good. Also means that the timing of this becomes really important. If I activate this effect twice during one turn, can it get an extra 4k? Yeah, it can. And this is clearly a very deliberate design. It doesn't say once per turn. We've seen a million of these kind of skills in the One Piece TCG that are limited to once per turn. This is not. And of course, don't forget we've got the leader that allows you to activate a character with 7,000 power or less. So, I mean, to me, it seems really deliberately designed. You attack with Sanji, go up to a 5k, use your leader to restand Sanji, attack again, and oh, look, you're a 7k. That seems to me to be a deliberate design of the deck. Now, the other designated super rare in the set is Emporio Ivankov, and it's another very interesting card. On play, you reveal one card from the top of your deck. And then you can play a character with a cost of two, i.e. if the top card of your deck is a character with a cost of two, you get to play it. The rest go to the bottom of your deck. And then when attacking once per turn, if you've got six or fewer cards in hand, you draw one card. I know the cards say six or less. Grammatically, it should be six or fewer. I don't know why, but it's, it's on every One Piece card. It always says or less when it should be or fewer. I hope one day it changes. That would make me happy. Can I use Emporio Ivankov's on play effect to play a character of a cost of two from my hand? No. The only card you can play using this character's on play effect is a card revealed according to this character's effect. Very, very important. Does place the rest at the top or bottom of your deck in this character's on play effect refer to your hand? Because remember, you can put that card to the top or bottom. No. It refers to the action taken with the card revealed, obviously assuming that it's not played. Obviously, if you look at the top card of your deck and it is a two-cost character, and you play that two-cost character, then there is no card to put to the top or bottom of your deck. Fairly obviously. And that's okay. You don't need to worry about it. Starter Deck 12 is looking like a very, very nice starter deck. And it's kind of weird, right? We're at that stage with a One Piece TCG where OPO 5 has been out for a while. And now OPO 6 is just coming out. We've just had Worlds and finished off the season. But now we've got these new tournaments being revealed. And this new key art to tell us that actually, don't worry, it's all starting up again. And it really does feel like we're turning the page on last season and moving into this season. And I'm like legitimately hyped. Like I say, I am hoping that this season I will be able to get into cast some more One Piece events. That is absolutely my goal. I am a huge fan of the One Piece TCG, as you might have noticed. I'm going to be carrying it on, you know, covering it on this channel a lot, hopefully casting some events. And really, honestly, just crossing my fingers, the One Piece remains as awesome as it has been, because I am loving it. Absolutely loving it. 
But now I want to hear from you guys. Are you going to any of these new tournaments? What do you think of the new key art? How excited are you for Starter Deck 12, etc.? Let me know in the comment section. Got us. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk about One Piece and a bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, join a Discord, and all kinds of fun things. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching... Wassy plays.